If you're looking for a good microphone, there's an almost infinite number of great options. Dynamic, condenser, USB, but would USB believe that it gets even more confusing? What about lavalier mics versus traditional mics or boom mics? Let's take a not cavalier look at lavalier mics. And right now I'm recording into three microphones, which is a lot of microphones. I've got this one right here, which is the Earthworks Icon running into the Rodecaster Pro 2. This has the reporterstore.com SM7B windscreen on it, but it is the Icon microphone. You might even say it's Myconic. I've got this microphone right here, which is the Sennheiser MKH50 running directly into my Sony FX3. And I've also got a lavalier microphone pinned to my chest. This is the Rode Lavalier 2 running into the Rode Wireless Go. This is just the original Wireless Go, not the Wireless Go 2, because I have not yet gone to the store to get the upgraded one, because this one still works great for me. And the Wireless Go is running directly into my Sony A7S III. And throughout this video, as I'm switching between different microphones, I'll be sure to put on screen which one you're hearing. But this video is less about audio quality and more about different types of microphones and microphone placement. And we're going to take a look at why you might want to use different microphones, specifically what we'll just call a standard studio microphone versus a lavalier microphone. So let's start off by taking a look at when you would want to use a lavalier microphone. I should say this is all based heavily on my own opinion and my own experience, so obviously that makes it just hard scientific fact, definitely not subjective at all. I think the absolute best time to use a lavalier microphone is when movement is key, when you need to be able to move around and get away from all of these other microphones and still be heard loud and clear. Check it out, I can even go over here, hello, and you can still hear me, even if I turn around over here and look at this awesome bass on the wall and these cool microphones over here. I'm not even facing the camera, this probably looks really dumb, but you can still hear me. <laughs> crystal clearly. A lavalier microphone is also great for times when you need to be hands-free. If you're just someone who talks with your hands a lot, if you're working on something and you can't be holding a microphone, or you're doing something where having a microphone kind of in the way isn't really practical, then that's when a lavalier microphone can really save the day. Even when a mic is on an arm or a boom out of frame, you still always kind of have to be aware of the mic placement. So if you're working on something, it's easy to sort of go away from the mic and kind of mess up the sound a little bit. But with a lavalier microphone, it's connected to you. So no matter where you might move to or what you're doing, the microphone is literally physically connected to you. So the audio is going to stay the same the whole time, hopefully. It would be great if everything we did, we had a professional boom operator just following us around and making sure we're getting the best possible audio all the time. But most of us don't have that as an option. And so we have to find other ways to get good audio. And that's when you might want to put a microphone on a boom arm out of frame, which again is awesome if you're not going to be moving around very much because this is not a robotic boom arm that tracks me or anything like that, at least not yet. And so I kind of have the same problem where I have to remember to talk into the microphone, stay in the microphone's pickup pattern and not move away too much. Otherwise it will negatively affect the quality of my audio. So if you don't want a mic in frame and you don't have the option to boom effectively, that's where a lavalier microphone can really come in handy. And right now I've got my lavalier microphone very aesthetically pinned just to the front of my shirt. It's sort of camouflaged by my plaid a little bit and I'm glad for the plaid because of that. But of course you can run lavalier microphones underneath clothing and you can still get good audio because the microphone is physically connected to the sound source even though there's no microphone visible in the frame because you've hidden it under their clothing. And of course the number one reason you might want to use a lavalier microphone in today's day and age is if you want to look cool on social media by holding the microphone even though you could just clip it to yourself because the clip is built in. And as much as I'm poking fun at the trend of people holding microphones that aren't meant to be handheld, honestly it doesn't really bother me that much personally because I'm all in favor of people trying to get better audio, but this is just really kind of inconvenient to be honest. But while we're talking about lavalier microphones and I'm holding one right here, we can talk about the price points that they come in at. They do range from very, very inexpensive. You can get like a 15 or $20 lavalier microphone all the way up to hundreds, if not even thousands of dollars. So the price, your imagination is the limit when it comes to price, but you can get a very, very decent lavalier microphone for under a hundred dollars. And then where you run that microphone is kind of up to you. You could run it through a long cable directly to your audio recorder or your camera depending on your setup that may or may not give you good sound quality. And the biggest downside to that is that then you have a long cable running, which when it's connected to someone and there's a long cable, it's very easy to forget about that. And then things get pulled and problems happen. Oftentimes running your lavalier microphone through a wireless unit 
is a great way to go, especially because wireless units are so affordable. This one is tangled around my hand right now. It's cutting off my circulation. There we go. Especially because wireless units are so affordable now and they're, they're really, really great. You can get fairly inexpensive ones like the Rode Wireless Go or the Deity Pocket Wireless, or you can get really, really nice expensive ones like the higher end Sonys and Sennheisers and stuff. And a great thing too is that these take up very little space, not just while you're using them, but when you're done with them, they can be wrapped up and just put in a small pouch. They go easily in bags. They take up zero room in your camera bag or your camera kit or anything. So all of those things when we're talking about lavalier microphones sound pretty great. And I mean that literally because the sound is pretty great. It's not grating. I hope you're not grading these jokes. Moving on. So if you can get a small compact microphone that's easy to use, sounds great, and gives you a ton of versatility, why on earth would anybody use anything else? So as much as I talked about lavalier microphones being great because they give you so much versatility and freedom of movement, that also does invite the possibility of more problems and more potential issues coming up with your audio. The more movement you have, the more possibilities for things like clothes rustling and just unpleasant audio things happening while you're recording and you won't be aware of it until you're listening back to the audio afterwards. You also have to be aware with lavalier microphones of things easily becoming disconnected sometimes. And if you're using a wireless system, making sure that the batteries on both the transmitter and the receiver are charged and ready to go at all times. So there's just more points of potential failures, I think, when using a lavalier microphone. So despite their versatility, that makes me hesitant to use them unless I need it for a very, very specific purpose. In general, I tend to stick with a studio microphone either on an arm like this or on a boom out of frame. Now, another thing when it comes to lavalier microphones is their pickup pattern. They typically have an omnidirectional pickup pattern, which gets its name from the fact that the microphone goes om nom 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 and eats sound from every direction. That was very stupid. As opposed to studio microphones, which tend to have more directional pickup patterns. Of course, I am speaking very generally here, but what that means is your lavalier microphone could potentially pick up more sound around you, whereas you could just choose to use a directional microphone and then you know exactly where it's picking up sound and where it's rejecting sound from. Of course, a lavalier microphone isn't a crazy super high gain like spy microphone where you can pick up a sound from across the street or anything like that but it's just something to be aware of when you're using it that it's sort of picking up sounds in a spherical shape that's all directions from the microphone. And this almost goes against a point that I made earlier, but I think for a lot of us, unless you're doing like narrative filmmaking or something, I think a time when you don't want to use a lavalier microphone is when you don't want to see a mic in frame. So for this point, let's switch over to the Sennheiser MKH50, which is boomed out of frame in this shot, but you can see it in this shot. And this is a very directional microphone that can get great audio quality, even though it's not in the frame. When it comes to concealing a microphone under somebody's clothing, that also just brings in a whole bunch of new potential problems. You can get little pieces of tape and use gaff tape to attach the microphone to somebody. That usually means you have to attach it to their skin, which can be uncomfortable or very awkward. I've also found when using a lavalier microphone that they are so comfortable, they're so small and lightweight, you often forget that you're wearing one. And so if you put one on somebody who's not used to it, especially if they have a wireless pack, they can often forget that they're wearing it and then just leave or sit on the wireless pack. And I've had so many <laughs> microphones and wireless units damaged over the years just because people using them weren't used to using microphones. I probably could have trained them and reminded them a little bit better, but also they just weren't aware of it. And so things fell and dropped and people just walked away while still wearing microphones and that's all very fun things to deal with. And this is probably my most controversial opinion on why you would not want to use a lavalier microphone. And it really just has to do with sound quality. Personally, I just don't think that a lavalier microphone sounds as good as a studio microphone. So we have the lavalier microphone, we've got the boom microphone up here, and then you've got a studio microphone right in front of my face here. I just think that this sounds significantly better than the lavalier microphone. So if you're doing something where audio is a top priority, using the best quality audio most of the time is, it just makes sense, right? It just seems to be the way to go. And I totally know that in the hands of a well-trained professional, any microphone can sound amazing. But when I'm thinking of somebody like myself, maybe somebody like you, where you're trying to do a whole bunch of things all at once, and you're trying to just find the simplest way to get the best audio out of your work, workflow, a lavalier microphone can be very tempting, but then you might notice that your audio is not sounding quite at the level that you would normally like it to. So I guess an easier way to put that is that speaking generally, the average person is more easily going to be able to get better sounding audio from not a lavalier microphone. I know this is probably not a fair comparison here, but if you just look at the two different microphones, right? Here is my very nice lavalier microphone. 
Here is the Shure SM7B. How can this really compete with the quality that something like this can deliver? Just look at how much more microphone is here. But I mean, the size of the capsule, the quality of the components, there's only so much, even the best engineers can fit into something that's this small. So I don't know how much scientific weight that holds, but it makes sense to me that something like this is just going to more easily be able to get high quality audio than something like this. Personally, I think that for spoken word applications, using a microphone like this is absolutely the best way to go. Something that is close to your face and designed to pick up high quality audio. It doesn't have to be a nice condenser mic running into a Rodecaster Pro 2. Even a relatively budget like USB microphone will really level up the quality of your audio compared to just your camera's built-in mic or your phone's built-in mic or something that's positioned halfway across the room. Getting a decent microphone close to the source of the sound is always gonna give you the best quality audio. But of course, with that, you then have this giant setup that's taking up space in your frame and also has the potential to get in the way. So if that doesn't work for you, that's when you can consider booming a microphone out of the frame, which will still get, depending on your microphone, high quality audio. The Sennheiser MKH-50 is not an inexpensive microphone, but prior to using the Sennheiser, I used the Rode VideoMic NTG as my main shotgun mic for a couple of years, and it got incredible results, and it is a fraction of the price. So it is possible to get great audio quality without having a microphone attached to you and without having a microphone in the frame. So just for comparison, this is the Sennheiser MKH-50. This is the lavalier microphone that's connected to me. And this is the studio microphone that's really, really close right to my mouth, the source of all the audio that you're hearing. I'm gonna go ahead and guess that, especially when comparing this microphone and maybe even the lavalier microphone to the boom microphone, even though this is a very high quality boom microphone, it's my favorite, you probably notice a bit more environmental tone. You can kind of just hear more of the room sound, maybe even some of the reverb of my voice bouncing off the walls and stuff. And if I have a microphone really close to me, you probably notice a lot less of that. But even though these two microphones are really close to me, there's definitely a difference in audio quality when I'm on this microphone here versus this microphone right here. So I think that all of these types of microphones can sound great. I think that they all have the potential to have a place in your workflow, especially if you take the time to work with them and try to figure out how to use them in a way that's going to sound their absolute best. But I think it's important to know what options are out there so that way you can just have more creative tools in your creative toolbox and you can use them whenever you need them. And so that's why even if you don't use it all the time, I definitely think that having a lavalier microphone of some kind in your setup is definitely a super valuable thing to have. And speaking of things that are valuable to have, thank you to everyone who helps support my channel through Patreon and YouTube channel memberships. And if you still wanna level up your audio with a few more microphone options, Mike, check out these one or two videos right here.